Could I take him by surprise from over there? Although I don't know how I'd get there. When you want to be silent, noise can be your best ally.
I did mess up a guy's face with an extinguisher once, but this kind is too heavy for my current needs. Hmm, what does this place have to hide? Will I need help? Who would I call? Pier 36. Meet me in an hour. Like that. If you're coming from Montgomery, it's the 6th sea-facing warehouse. What's going on? And bring the cavalry. Think of screaming. I might not even talk. It looks like an arrowhead.
Answer my questions, and I'll protect you from Mitchell. What? As soon as he finds out you've talked to me, he'll kill you. Just like he did to your partner, Randall Lee. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. What's this warehouse for? It's where I take my naps. I thought that was obvious. Where did Mitchell go? Mitchell? What Mitchell? What's Mitchell up to? Damn, are you in love with this guy or what? If you don't answer my questions, you'll spend the rest of your life in Sing Sing. Only if I don't answer? Come on. I'll give you a minute to think about some more convincing answers. According to this, the warehouse belonged to a Canadian import company. supposed to protect children during the night, trapping all evil in its spider web. If I'm not mistaken, these are incense sticks, used in cleansing rituals. It could be an Ojibwa totem pole, in which case, the top animal would be a crane.
Everything seems to prove that Gil is a Native American, and I'm almost sure that the woman in the picture is his mother. You know who'll always believe in you? Your mother. My mother never lost her faith in me. And I gave her plenty of reasons when I was a kid. I spent more time in detention than in the classroom. I was a big cat, so I always took it out on the little guys. Somehow, my mother managed to keep me in school until I got into college. But I never gave her reasons to believe in me then, either. My parents gave me a monthly allowance, which I spent mainly on poker games and the like. So after a year of college, I quit. Then Pearl Harbor happened. I got drafted and sent to Europe. I never knew how to follow orders. They sent me back home with a dishonorable discharge. But when I got back, I was treated like a pariah, a veteran outcast who never should have come back in the first place. And yet, my mother never ceased to... <coughs> I also fought in the war. That's where I met Mitchell. They used me, like many of my people. And then they just tossed us aside. The first time Mitchell offered me to do this, I told him to take a hike. I wanted to get my act together, but I ended up begging him. I don't like Mitchell. I don't like the things he makes me do. I don't like that German rat either. But what I liked least of all, is myself. I don't like what I did during the war, and I don't like what I'm doing now. Do you know what it's like to kill a friend for the sake of the mission? Huh. But my mother, she always thought I'd make amends and start anew. Maybe it's time I did just that. It's number three.
Hey. You're back. It's all right. Don't be afraid, little girl. I'm gonna get you out of here, okay? Vita, no hurt. Hey. Vita, no hurt. Hmm. A list of names? Somehow related to chemical agents? Subject, Brunhilde Gruner. Treatment, day 1,500. The patient's ability to speak continues to diminish. Now she can only pronounce the occasional word in German. Tissue degeneration persists. And yet, Perhaps due to drastic reduction of benzylpodine dosage and an increase of anupropion, we have observed a 3% of deceleration of said degeneration. Furthermore, and perhaps this is the best finding so far, the subject exhibits a mild recovery of her speaking. It's not a lot, and yet... We are on the right track. All hope is not lost. Subject, Craig Spano. Treatment, De Zero. The subject is a veteran baseball player who has lost speed 
strength and agility due to the regular aging process. The patient refers intense pain on the right scapula, most likely caused by an old injury. The goals of our medical approach are twofold. To relieve pain caused by the prior injury so that the subject can play without symptoms and to help the patient regain the physical condition lost in the aging process, thus allowing him to perform at elite levels. Treatment. Day 120, the patient no longer feels pain when using his right arm, circumstance that allows him to pitch without fear. So far, the only side effect seems to be a slight euphoria experienced three hours after dosage, which subsides four hours later, taking the patient on an emotional roller coaster of sorts with bouts of mild trembling. Treatment, day 341. Moments of euphoria and boosted physical performance have become increasingly short while the ensuing periods of depression and weakness have become longer, including severe trem. Although we have met all therapeutic goals, we will proceed to terminate the treatment. In order to avoid causing irreparable physical and mental damage to the patient, Mitchell is cashing in by selling drugs to enhance athletes' performances. The worst part of Mitchell's scheme isn't that it's illegal or unethical, it's that he didn't even care about compromising the athlete's health. Once upon a time, once upon a time, there was a beautiful princess called Brunhilda. Hi, my name is Brunhilda, and I'm very happy, said Brunhilda. And then Brunhilda, who had a beautiful name, really beautiful, 
a really beautiful name ran into someone very special. Oh, who was it? A magical cat called John. I'm a magical cat, my name is John. <laughs> Hi, John's cat. I really like magical cats. Hi, Road Hilda. I'm gonna use my magical power to help you. Get out of a cage, too. You say silly things, John the Cat. So what are you gonna help me do? Fill up a bunch of color balloons. Ha, ha, ha. I love balloons. What's your favorite balloon color? Wow, that's a very hard question. <gasps> but John the Cat, it's the easiest question in the world. Let me show you how easy it is. My favorite balloon color is Oh, Brunelda? Mm. That's exactly what I was about to say. Bird. <laughs> John. Brunhinda. Front. <laughs> Hi, bird. Why are you wearing that mask? Well, uh, gas. Uh, well, maybe we should get out of here. What do you think, bird? And what about you, Boonhilda? Uh -huh. Don't you think that? Gil? You know you're not allowed down here. You know you're not allowed. It's... You bastard. Oh. I should kill you right here, right uh, now. Uh, I don't know. You don't know? I know you're testing drugs on that girl. Brunhilde? No. She's my daughter. She was born with a degenerative disease, a rare condition similar to the Angleman syndrome. There are only four known cases like hers, and none of the patients reached the age of five. But I couldn't give up. I continued to research and found something. It didn't make her better, but anyway, that same treatment used on healthy subjects seems to improve their stamina. And their reflexes? It also seems to improve their pain threshold. Somehow, the Reich heard about my experiments and tried to recruit me to create super soldiers. Yes, that Reich. We're talking late 30s Berlin. I escaped with Brunhilde and came to your country. But the American military also heard about me. I spent the entire war experimenting with drugs on soldiers. Some were highly effective, I must say. When the war was over, my experiments were discarded. 
I was forbidden all access to the drugs, and Brunhilde got worse. But then God sent me Angus Mitchell. We had met during the war, and he came to offer me a deal. I would make drugs for athletes, and he would sell them. With my earnings, I could pay for Brunhilde's treatment. What else do you want me to say? I noticed Yale's name appears twice on your list of athletes. One mention was crossed out. Why? I don't know. A couple of months ago, Mitchell told me to prepare pills suited to his profile. But a week ago, he told me to stop. And then two days ago, he asked me to make them again. About those pills. There was a bottle there before. What is he looking at? Don't dwell on it, Josh. You had to tell him the truth in order to protect Brunhilda. I would have done the same thing. Finish packing up your things and stop torturing yourself, okay? Thanks, Angus. I won't be long. Oh, honey. You like living here? Yeah, me too. But we have to go somewhere else and it's all that bad cat's fault. Yes, sweetie. We're going to a new home now. A prettier one. And you'll be happier there. Now go with Papa, honey. Give him a kiss. Go on. Give him a kiss. Go on. <laughs> I'm... I'm sorry about this, Josh. But we gave it our best, didn't we? Huh? What? What do you mean, Angus? I wish it hadn't come to this. Angus, what's wrong? Bye, Josh. You're happy, you son of a bitch. They were good people. I hope that made you feel better. I like it when you smile. You're so far from the truth. What the?
Benno just ran out that way. Don't torture yourself. You did everything you could. Will you make it? The doctors think so. They found him unconscious by the basement door. What?
Could Gil have blocked the basement door from the outside to kill Mitchell? You think? That's a serious accusation. Are you sure, or is this just a theory of yours? It's just a theory. Let's hope we get the truth out of him. Huh. You think Gil was involved in the previous murders? What if it was Gil who killed his partner, Randall Lee, under Mitchell's orders? Another serious accusation. Are you sure? Yes. Everything points in that direction, including my gut. Wait. Couldn't Mitchell be Randall Lee's murderer? So he misses with two shots at point-blank range, and then he hits a guy smack in the forehead from across the street? No. Mitchell is not the sniper who wiped out Randall Lee. Yeah, I guess you're right. But we still don't know what caused Craig Spano's death. There's no doubt about it. Spano took drugs from the lab, and they killed him. But if that were true, how many more athletes are in danger? And most importantly, who are they? Is Bobby Yale involved? I didn't see them all, but write down these names. Peter Lowe, Xavier Chains, Helen Moore, Bill Goldman, Miles Benton, Alexander Wood, Jacob Ziegler, and yes, Bobby Yale. Thanks. Saving lives for a change, huh? In any case, thanks for the call. I was starting to think you'd never trust the police again. I don't trust the cops. I trust you. Hey, John. Surprise. It could have given a tip to a friend, don't you think? Or is that only the case when, uh, when I help you? <laughs> Get that guy out of here. All right. Let's get this over with. When the war ended, Mitchell convinced Groon to use his super soldier drugs on elite athletes. Somehow, Dunn found out about Mitchell's scheme. So when Mitchell heard that Dunn was on to him, he ordered Randall Lee to kill him and frame Yale for the murder. Then, he made Randall search Dunn's house and the gym for any incriminating evidence he might have had against him. The poor cleaning lady died almost by chance. When you stuck your nose in the case, he tried to scare you by sending his thugs to give you a beating. And when that didn't work, he asked Randall Lee to finish you off on the gym rooftop. But Randall not only failed, he got captured. So Mitchell ordered Gil to put a bullet through his head, which only made Gil upset. You kept getting closer and closer to the point of discovering his headquarters. When Mitchell realized he was cornered, he burned his bridges by setting the lab on fire along with Dr. Groon and his daughter. 
Gil saw the opportunity to get back at Mitchell, so he blocked the only exit so that he would also die in the fire. Did I leave any loose ends? Just a few. But don't worry about it. I'll take care of them now. So I guess thanks for everything. In your classic noir films and novels, solving a case never amounts to a happy ending. The detective is always left with a sense of bitterness. A feeling that, before he took the case, the world was a better place. That he was a better person. Come on, now speed it out! Sometimes I just let my character get the best of me. What do you want from me? I told Stone what I knew, that he was going to let Yale win, that if he didn't, O'Leary would destroy Helen Moore's career, and that Moore was doomed either way, or would be as soon as America discovered her sweetheart was on drugs. I don't believe you. No way. Who sent you? Today? Nobody. And what if I did believe you? What would that change? If I don't do this for her, how could I ever look her in the eyes? How could we stay together? You think you'll stay together when you lose your title and they accuse her of doping? At least I know I tried. I know your record. Your rise to the top is clean, free of both O'Leary's and drugs. God, you might just be one of the only honest athletes I've met recently. Please don't let them change that. Is it all about being professional to you? Suit yourself. But trust me, your manager is a murderer. Get as far away from him as possible. Hey, Black Sad! I'll think about it. Yale confirmed to me that Dunn found out that Mitchell was giving him meds. That was the reason they argued the evening of his death. In fact, I was clean at the time. Hadn't used for days. I didn't want to go down that road. I wanted to follow Joe. But he discovered everything. He didn't believe me when I said I had nothing to do with it. But you used again. Only after his death. I, I needed to cope. But the drugs gave you a panic attack. Yeah. But I've been clean ever since. Mitchell gave you the pills when he stopped by the hospital. Hence, your miraculous recovery. Are you planning on taking them before the fight? Do it. Someone has to save that gym. Sorry about your Aunt Mary. She was a good woman.
Stone and Yale hadn't taken away the bitterness I felt. I needed a friend. He was outraged that I hadn't given him the tip, but he let it go as soon as I bought him a milkshake. After the perfect storm of corruption and murder, only friendship could reconcile me with the world. Only that could make me believe in mankind again. Only that could cleanse my soul. Only that and money. In your standard noir novel, Yale and Stone would be punished for breaking the rules. There would be justice for Sonia, the victim. But this was the real world. As the detective who had cracked the case, I just had to get my paycheck and be on my way. Nice to meet you, Mr. Blacksad. Mr. Thorpe is on his way. Care to take a seat while you wait? Did he tell you why he's running late? He'll be here in a minute. Please take a seat. <laughs> 